on November 30th, 2013, less than a month, the price of Bitcoin rose from just under $200 to over $1,000. In late 2013, the Bitcoin bubble hit its peak at around $1,165 before suddenly bursting and entering a bearish run that lasted until the end of 2015. There are a couple speculations about why the bubble occurred. First, Chinese investors bought Bitcoins as a speculative financial investment. Many sold because of the warnings issued by the Chinese government. Second, automated trading in Mt. Gox may have artificially driven the price up by continuously buying Bitcoins. Soon after the creation of Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies began popping up on the internet as well, each tailored to a different use case or audience. These cryptocurrencies, other than Bitcoin, Litecoin, Zcash, Stellar, Ripple, Ethereum, Dogecoin, Dash, Monero, and others, are known as altcoins, alt standing for alternative. For example, Litecoin aims to be the silver to Bitcoin's gold. It is more progressive in its software updates and serves as a testing ground for proposed Bitcoin software updates. In addition, Zcash uses innovative zero-knowledge proofs, which are a way to prove a fact without revealing information about the fact itself. This furthers cryptocurrency privacy by allowing transactions to be validated without revealing information about the sender, recipient, and value transferred. Stellar and Ripple pioneered new federated consensus algorithms, eliminating the need to waste electricity solving cryptographic hash puzzles. These are just a few examples of how coins other than Bitcoin are trying to solve their own individual problems, making for a wider crypto space. Bad reputation, Bitcoin finally began to grow in general popularity. Here are some of the big headlines following Mt. Gox's theft and subsequent declaration of bankruptcy in February 2014. In March 2014, people thought they had found Bitcoin inventor Satoshi Nakamoto in California. But that was a false alarm. In September 2014, venture capitalist Tim Draper announced his predictions of Bitcoin's price heading up to $10,000. For context about his perspective, he was interested in cryptocurrencies since before Bitcoin. In 2003, he met a father in South Korea who bought a virtual sword for his son with fiat money, and was curious ever since. He also won some Bitcoins from the FBI auction of confiscated Bitcoins from the Silk Road shutdown. 2014 was also the year when merchants began to accept Bitcoin as a form of payment. In January, Overstock.com became the first major retailer to accept Bitcoins. Then, in September, PayPal partnered with Coinbase, BitPay, and GoCoin. Fun fact, Blockchain at Berkeley was previously known as Bitcoin Association of Berkeley, and in 2014, these headlines were happening every week. At every club meeting, our seven members would discuss the latest hack, latest bankruptcy, and the latest Ponzi scheme. We've grown so much since then, and that just comes to show how much the blockchain space has matured over the years. A bunch of Bitcoin startups began popping up as well too. Wallet companies helped other companies or users handle Bitcoin without having to personally join the Bitcoin network. For example, Coinbase is an online exchange that manages wallets and lets users buy and sell Bitcoin for fiat currency. BitPay allows merchants to accept Bitcoin. Blockchain.info is a block explorer that allows users to see individual blocks and transactions in the Bitcoin blockchain in browser without having to download the entire blockchain themselves. Most importantly though, during this time, the term blockchain started becoming a buzzword. This is a graph of Bitcoin prices from 2014 to 2015, where you can see that first prices shot up immensely, then slowly started to fall. Of course, we all know that the price recovered and went back after this but this was a huge shock to the community at the time. There are a few theories as to why Bitcoin burst at this time. One was that investors who had speculated and bought a lot of Bitcoin started to have second thoughts and began to sell, especially Chinese investors who had sold because of warnings issued by the Chinese government. And then of course, the market amplified the current trend, so people further dumped because they feared a loss in value.